Deep Woken has a um, colored history in the past of this channel. For those who missed out on the Shit Woken joke, which is unfortunately coming to a swift end at the release of this video, uh, rest in peace, Shit Woken. Probably my favorite running joke on the entire channel. Um, people have been asking me to play Deep Woken for like a million years. Now, I had my reasons for not playing it, which I'll be talking about in just a second, but uh, in order to get under people's skin, and because I thought it was funny, every time someone would ask me about Deep Woken, or tell me to play it, or ask me why I wasn't playing it, I would simply respond, Shit Woken, and never explain. Why did I do this? Well, I just told you, I thought it was funny, uh, and it made people get upset. And boy, did it make people get upset over the years, which is why it is a real shame that unfortunately, I have to put it to rest. And for all of you who fell for the shit woken ruse over the years, despite the fact that previously to this video, I had never even touched the game, uh, gotcha, and sorry about that. Anyways, why didn't I play Deep Woken? Well, it's pretty much entirely just due to Roblox jank and the way that the game works the way I understood it at the time and the way I still understand it today. On screen right now, you can see a great example of Roblox jank. Unfortunately, because of Roblox engine itself, which is unfixable, the player character itself is not handled by the server. And the reason that it's not handled by the server entirely is because if it was, then you would lag and rubber band everywhere, and 90% of the people who play Roblox on terrible connections wouldn't be able to do anything. The side effect of this is that everything you do in Roblox is always going to be significantly delayed. That's why when you see an attack here, and then I turn my character around, you see it significantly linger behind my character. This gets further emphasized at higher pings, and it's a reality of Roblox that makes playing just general combat games potentially really not fun. So when you look at my history of playing video games, especially those relatively similar to Deep Woken, such as Dark Souls, which is a trial and error game, uh, when you take a Dark Souls trial and error level game and you include it with Roblox jank and things that don't work the way they should, on top of having a permadeath system that's extremely punishing, yeah, uh, it wasn't looking great for this game. Then you take into consideration the fact that you have to pay to access the game, meaning that if I wanted to roll around incognito in a game where incognito is really important because people can just go out of their way to look for me and kill me, I'd have to pay even more money outside of the initial upfront cost. So I simply just couldn't be bothered. With all that being said, it was 50% for Cyber Monday slash Black Friday, so I figured I might as well jump in, because eventually I'm gonna have to review this game. And because I've been saying that I wouldn't play it for the better part of a year now, I figured people wouldn't be looking for me, so I wouldn't have to worry about getting ganked or chased around by random people. So, now I've played it. Is it the best game on Roblox? A masterpiece that puts every other game on the platform to shame? Uh, maybe. That's a cop-out, I know, but I can't help it. It's clear to me that Deep Woken is definitely one of the most well-made games on the platform, but I think it has some seriously crippling flaws that hold it back substantially. And talking about all of that is what this video aims to do. I'm gonna be going through all of the things I liked about the game, then looping back around to the end of the video with my criticism. We're gonna be kicking the positives off with the atmosphere and level design. It's clear to me that this is the strongest part of Deep Woken by a large margin, and consequently, it's probably something that flies under the radar for most of the edgy 14-year-old Voidwalkers looking to boot up the game with the express purpose to slit your throat. But on the real, there was clearly a lot of work that went into this part of the game, and it shows. Booting up the game for the first time, and you as a player feel like an insignificant speck when compared to these massive sprawling maps. Each explorable island is jam-packed with quests, secrets, enemies, and so on that make the world really feel lived in and alive. Towns themselves are filled with people, shops, and otherwise, with guard NPCs occasionally walking around patrolling the streets. The attention to detail in almost every single aspect of the game world is something that I doubt we'll ever see in any other Roblox game ever. The point is, in the context of the world you're playing in, everywhere you go feels real in a sense. It's believable in the world that you're currently in, everywhere you go. 
All of these things are amplified by the absolutely fantastic soundtrack composed by Noctigonus. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. This guy's got some serious talent, and if you don't believe me, I'll play just a few of the tracks here. Remember, this is all original music created for a Roblox game. If I were to simply be rating games based on their atmosphere alone, Deep Woken would easily have scored a 10 out of 10. But the atmosphere and level design isn't all there is to games, so let's move on. Unsurprisingly, the main pillar of Deep Woken is of course fighting enemies. Whether it be a lowly bandit, a massive monster, or another player, without combat, the game cannot function. On the whole, Deep Woken's combat succeeds by always making the player feel in control of their character. And when damage is taken, most of the time, it's your actions or inaction that lead to that result. There's definitely a significant learning curve when it comes to combat in this game, knowing when to parry attacks, how to react when others parry, understanding when it's best to roll, how best to break free when you inevitably start taking damage, etc. These are all simple mechanics in their core, but brutally punishing nuances to the combat that until you start getting the hang of all of them working together, you will die. This is an aspect of the game that I have heavily mixed feelings on, so we'll go into it further down the line when we get into the issues that I had. But overall, combat mechanics are implemented well and feel good to interact with. The most surprising part of combat, though, was how competent and mostly well-made the AI was. Sure, sometimes it has its issues getting over ledges and such, as well as the fact that the AI sometimes just will not give up, causing 30-year stalling matches where you just run in circles over and over and over again trying to get the AI to leave you alone when you have a sliver of health, but usually the AI works great. They fight more like a player would than any Roblox game I've played or likely ever will play, with humanoid enemies making use of almost all the same tools that you would, because, well, they're supposed to be just as intelligent or competent as you are in the world. The other pillar of combat that elevates it is the sound design. I don't know what it is about Deep Woken and music and sounds, but they've got this down pat. Combat sounds violent and visceral, and there are several audio cues that make the combat easier to understand and use once you start picking up on them. Having an understanding of timing things after an enemy parries or blocks your attack, as well as which attacks cannot be blocked or parried and so on, are all executed to perfection with the combat and sound design. At the end of the day, Deep Woken's combat plays into almost all of the aspects of combat that I harp on time and time again when it comes to Roblox anime games. And that's why the overall package I feel is extremely solid and also almost certainly one of the reasons that so many of you have recommended this game to me. It hits all those bases that I look for in a combat system, so they've done a bang up job. As I said earlier, one of my big reasons for avoiding Deep Woken was the idea of permadeath in a high-stakes Roblox game where, at any second, Roblox jank can simply just take your life. That being said, after playing, I think Deep Woken's death system has its merits and its drawbacks. The best thing about Deep Woken's permanent death system is that it gives you the ability to try the game again, but this time experiment with an entirely different way to play the game. When you consider that you can choose between three different weapon classes, six different mantra styles, 11 different oaths, and the list continues, with all of those respective things having a variety of weapons and spells at their disposal that you can't be using all at once, that all do different things, yeah, there's a lot to work with here. What the death system succeeds at is encouraging you to try new things after your character's been killed off. But it's not as if all is lost when you die either. 
There are several permanent upgrades that you can acquire through different quests that will activate when you reach certain milestones on a new character, without the need to completely redo the quests associated with them. Adding on to this, when your character does fully wipe, you gain resonance points based on the power level of your dead character, which can apply passive bonuses on any subsequent lives, as well as the ability to pass down two of your items to your next character. As for death itself, I think it definitely has some flaws that we'll be talking about later, but for the most part, I think it's executed well, and adds a lot of tension to each battle. If at any point you understand that if you screw up and die, you have the potential of losing everything, it adds a lot of stress, and I think that stress ends up being a good thing rather than a drawback for the game. But that wraps up our positive section, so now it's time to get down to where the game loses points. Yep, well, I was right about one thing. So, I said earlier that Roblox jank and latency turned me off from this game. And, well, I was right. The realities of this game being a Roblox game at the end of the day absolutely creep their way into this game and can be the cause for extreme frustration. The simple fact of the matter is that you cannot always assume while playing that a fight will play out with its mechanics intact as it should because there's a laundry list of things that can go wrong. Ping just flat out changes the timings for some moves. The difference between playing on 60 ping compared to 100 is absolutely staggering. That means that for people with poor connections, the game probably quickly borders on completely unplayable. In terms of actually finding servers with quality ping, that also poses itself as a problem. The server browser might as well be completely worthless in this regard, as the regions it's showing on your screen are not the regions that you're going to be playing in. Plain and simple. I live in New Jersey. That's on the east coast of the US for those who don't live here. If I'm connecting to a server in Texas, which is around central US, there is no way I should be getting over 300 milliseconds of ping. Consequently, a server in California, on the other side of the country, should not have less ping than a server in Texas. Texas is closer. Why do I have a worse connection to Texas? Basically, joining a server through here is a total crapshoot. And because ping is so important, if the server that the quick join option puts you in isn't ideal, which for some people can and will happen, you have the potential of spending 10 or more minutes searching for a good server on the server browser, which is miserable. Now listen, I understand that this is a Roblox issue, and it's Roblox related the developers can't fix it, but it takes away from the overall game experience, and it matters at the end of the day. But even if you are in a halfway decent or good server, because it's Roblox, if someone near you is loading in a ton of effects or playing with a lot of people, on and on and on, the ping has the potential of spiking, because that's just how Roblox works. And if this happens in a critical moment, well yeah, you're screwed. I had countless I dodged that, or I parried that, moments while playing this game. And then I would look back on the footage and I'd be like, yeah I did, but the game screwed me anyway. Which is exactly what I was afraid of going into this game. When everything in Deep Woken is working at its best, the game is phenomenal. But the second that some aspects start to crumble, the entire experience has the potential to fall apart. Right, so, um, the new player experience. It's fucking awful. They might as well rename Deep Woken to Wiki Woken, or maybe Google Woken, because this game is unplayable without it. To be honest, even with the wiki, it can be a struggle sometimes to figure out where things are or what you need to do. I got pulled back to my days when I still played Tarkov with an internet browser filled up with like a hundred wiki tabs so I knew what the hell I was doing. There is a tutorial in the game, but it leaves out several integral, incredibly important aspects of the game that you need to know about making it honestly borderline useless in the grand scheme of things. For the purposes of this review, I played the game in three distinct ways. The first was that myself and two of my friends, all basically complete newcomers to Deep Woken, logged on to simply play together. It was, as you'd probably expect, a complete disaster. 
We didn't know what we were supposed to be doing, we had barely any practice in terms of combat or fighting, and most of the day consisted of running away from things with a sliver of health left. Because it's not explained at all, when we got sent to the depths, it was a death sentence. Eventually we caved and just used Google, but even then, nobody got out of the depths a single time during this section. Not once. After about an hour and a half, we called it a night, and I don't really see either of those people logging on to play again, and that's kind of a shame. It's just not super fun to have absolutely zero direction other than sail to island, and then when you get there, die to the first three things you see. The second time I played, I enlisted the help of my good friend MMDDA, who's been in a bunch of videos, and his brother Mike. Huge shoutouts to them for helping me out, because without them, well, I don't know if this review ever would have even come out in the first place. These guys are deep woken veterans who actually know what they're doing, and instantly my experience with the game turned around. With them basically carrying me through sections of the game and explaining how different systems in the game worked, it gave me the chance to learn about certain enemies and how to fight them without the constant threat of being killed in three hits in the process of trying to learn those things. I was also able to put together a makeshift build with a better understanding of how my levels impacted gameplay, how traits were tied to levels and skills, and so on. The point was, these guys were basically doing the game's tutorial for them. And that's... well, that's not how games are supposed to work. Like I said, without them, I don't even think I'd be playing Deepwoken, I'd just be in deep shit. I said I played three different ways though, and that third way was hands down the most effective in terms of learning the game. I paid for another character slot with the sole intention of completing the Trial of One. For those who don't know, the Trial of One is a hidden area of the game that can only be accessed at level one. It strips you of all your belongings and puts you in a gauntlet against a huge variety of different monsters that you'll be fighting throughout the game. And if you complete all of the trials, it basically jumpstarts your character to around level 6 as soon as you start. If you manage to complete 4 of the 9 trials, it also unlocks an entirely new origin in the game, which for those who don't know, an origin is basically where you start. And this origin starts you directly at the trial of 1, allowing you effectively limitless attempts without any real risk and without the need to sail all the way to the corner of the map where this is located. It took me roughly two hours to complete the Trial of One in its entirety. But here's the thing. During those two hours, I was taught the ins and outs of several monsters that I wouldn't have stood a chance against in the open world. These monsters in the Trials killed me again and again, but I got to keep trying, and therein sort of lies the problem. I've beaten Dark Souls 1 and 2. Those games, for all intents and purposes, are what I like to call trial and error games. It's often not realistic to win on your first, or sometimes even 15th attempt. Deep Woken is definitely a trial and error game, but for a lot of players, they'll just never even have a chance to get past the error part. If every time you run into a Megalodon, it fucks you up in 15 seconds, how are you supposed to learn how to fight against it? The trial is a great way of doing that but it's tucked away in an obscure area of the map that you just flat out will not find without someone telling you or a wiki. I understand that a lot of these roguelike games are designed around players finding things you've added and having a bunch of secrets. But here's the thing, that's only really interesting for the first week or something that something is introduced. After that, it simply becomes gatekeeping where those with the knowledge flourish and those without either Google a guide or drown, figuratively and literally in this case. The other major flaw when it comes to being new is that despite having a functioning quest log and waypoints, no quest that I came across in the game actually gives you any of these. If you talk to an NPC and they ask for Umbral Obsidian and you don't know what drops Umbral Obsidian, uh, that can be a problem. That becomes an even bigger problem when you forget who asked you to get the Umbral Obsidian. So even if you do get it, you don't remember which NPC you're supposed to be giving it to. Even if there were no waypoints in the game, the game could have at least given you the common courtesy of logging which quests you have active in some sort of quest log and what they require from you. But nope, you get nothing. It exists at the very beginning of the game, but that's seemingly it. It says, go to Lower Orishia, 
fuck you, that's all you get. It just strikes me as really odd, and it feels like purposeless gatekeeping to funnel you towards the wiki. I think it's okay to have certain things be hidden from the players, as long as it's easy to pick up on or not that impactful to gameplay. But Deepwoken feels the need to hide everything, and all that ends up doing is making the barrier for entry higher than it otherwise should be, and turning players away from an overall good experience. I was so taken aback by the general design decisions here that I decided to go out of my way and was able to get in contact with one of the owners and head developers over for Deepwoken, Archmage. I asked him a whole bunch of questions that honestly won't really fit super well into this video, so they'll probably be put in their own separate video, but for the sake of this one, in terms of the player onboarding experience and the fact that everything's hidden, while he agreed that the player onboarding was pretty bad, which I think it would be hard not to, he doubled down on the fact that everything is hidden and it's impossible to find anything out. But then my question to Archmage would mostly be, do you think that it's hard for people to go on Google and search up Deepwoken Umbral Obsidian? Or how to get Shadowcast in Deepwoken? Like, do you think that those things are difficult and they add to the game? Because I don't think they do. That's not hard. So I'm not entirely sure what the thought process behind these things are, but they're here and they take away from the game. That's about all I have to say on it. Yeah. So, we've talked about the good, we've talked about the bad, so now it comes down to the score. Deepwoken is a far cry from the general complete and total garbage on this platform, and because of that I'll be rating it based around the standards of real games rather than against Roblox games, because if we were doing that I would just give it a 10 out of 10 and move on. Honestly, pretty much any game that I play on this platform would get a 10 out of 10 on Roblox standard scale just because of how awful the general games are here. As a whole though, I feel like Deepwoken scores an 8 out of 10. Simply put, this is a great game. For the cost of $5, this game puts a lot of modern $70 AAA releases to shame. There is a lot of game here, and it would take you hundreds if not thousands of hours to explore all of it. The hard part with Deepwoken though, and the reason that it loses points is simple. It's that difficulty towards the beginning of the game and the fact that it's flat out unplayable without outside sources. I can only imagine the sheer amount of people who boot Deepwoken hearing about how good it is and then never make it past Lower Orisha. I bet that number is in the upper hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. I don't know how Deepwoken's monetization works in the long run, but I think if they can get their new player experience under control, and open the game up to everyone with the removal of the current paywall, there's a 10 out of 10 game to be had here. But for right now, a very high 8 is the highest I can go. I hope after creating this video, a lot of you who have been absolutely begging me to play Deepwoken will be relatively happy with this. It had all the problems that I thought it would have, but overall, like I said, it's a really good game, and I'm glad I played it. I don't really know if I'm going to continue to play it, because, well, now that I've played it once, there's gonna be people looking for me in servers, and I really don't wanna be dealing with that. But I had a pretty good time, especially when I was playing with some of my friends. So if I do decide to play it more, let me know if you wanna see some stuff from Deepwoken on the channel. Anyways, that's all from me for today. So if you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day and night wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Oh,